In the digital age of content, we are consuming information all the time, but we don't really think about how we are actually going to store all of that information. And I see people all the time on the internet who want to consume newer information. They want to read all the new books. They want to listen to all the newer podcasts, but they never really think about how they're actually going to store all of that information because otherwise your brain will actually forget that information as time goes on. So in this video, and this is the third video of my type of like this obsidian course, and this is the last video. In this video, I'll be teaching you how you can develop a digital brain or as some people in the self-help community likes to call as their second brain inside of a comprehensive note-taking app like Obsidian. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So hope you guys are doing great and so am I. So as I said, this is the third video and I would actually recommend you to watch the other two videos in case you want to learn about Obsidian. In the very first video, I talked about how you can, you know, go through the basics of Obsidian and Obsidian on kind of like a very beginner level. And then in the second video, I actually talked about how you can master Obsidian and how you can go through all the keyboard shortcuts, the plugins, the community plugins, all sorts of settings that you want to mess with, a bunch of that kind of stuff. So I'll just link both of them up in here. I'll actually link the whole playlist list up in here also down in the description so i'll recommend you to watch that before you actually watch this video in case you don't know much about obsidian but even if you know you can straight away go to the second video and actually learn about all the keyboard shortcuts so you can make this whole process really fast and why i'm saying all of that is because i won't be discussing those things that are discussed over there back in the end because that will actually be wasting my time and even on top of that will be wasting of course your time as well and i don't want that so straight away jumping onto my screen and i'll actually show you how i made my second brain inside of obsidian so if we look at my screen at the moment this is how my second brain inside of obsidian really looks like and if you want to know the statistics i have about 600 files roughly speaking as you guys can see over here and about 264,335 or something crazy like that but the key thing to notice over here is the fact that I have all the folders that are organized by default. So first I'll be explaining you the folder structuring and the whole hierarchy of folders because that's the most important thing inside of Obsidian. So how that's basically done is I'm using the para method by Tiago Forde. It is extremely famous. I'll actually, by the way, link the original documentation. You can go on his you know, blog and actually read how para works and you can go in depth. But I'll be explaining you in kind of like a summarized manner, not going into the nitty gritty of that. But in case you're one of those heathens who actually care about the nitty gritty, you can actually go for there and check that out. But as far as para is concerned, in para, that is P-A-R-A, -A, P stands for projects, A stands for areas, R stands for resources, and A stands for archive. So let's just forget about inbox for a second. So how I maintain all of that is, so projects basically contain all the active things that I'm doing in my life. So if I'm in case, if I open up projects, you guys can see I have all of these things that i'm currently working on it has french i'm learning french at the moment a little bit then i have after effects i was learning after effects then i have c plus plus data structures and algorithms java programming python course and then we have web development as well so these are kind of like all the active projects that i'm doing at the moment i know there's a couple of them and a few of them i'm not even working on them right now so i'll actually you know just change the file directory all that kind of stuff the whole gist of using projects is that I just want to keep all the files stacked up, the ones that I'm using at the moment. Then after projects, we have areas and areas are all the different areas of my life that I'm involved in. So you have writing, philosophy, filmmaking, business, computer science, journaling, goals, all that kind of stuff. Out of all the different areas of my life that I have, like for example, computer science, inside of computer science, I have C programming and machine learning. So let's say if I'm ever really working on machine learning, even though it's like zero files, zero folders, I have not worked on that at all, like zero. So if I I want to work on machine learning what i can do is i can drop the machine learning folder from over here to over here inside of projects so i can actually start working on so projects are basically the thing that you're working on and areas are different areas of life that may contain different sort of projects that you may have done in the past you're you know maybe doing in the future someday and the active ones are actually kept in the project as far as the note taking process is concerned this is how that's done and then after that you have all the resources the third one resources are all the resources that you have like audiobooks podcast youtube videos and then you have other resources you have wiki 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 actually what do people even call it i call it wiki you can actually correct me down in the comments down below in case i'm wrong inside of this we basically have concepts things and people so if something is there as a concept you know i'll put it over here something i'll put it over here 
and if i mentioned about a certain individual i'll put it over here then you have all the templates remember in my last video i actually made a folder of templates if i'll show you this specific one that i used to teach you guys the basics of obsidian i have templates for obsidian i had this specific folder and i had two of these templates in my actual one i have this massive folder of templates and i have so many subfolders inside of that as well so that's the reason i have so many templates and they're well organized then after that you can basically have books blogs seminars quotes all that kind of stuff and that's the story of projects areas resources if something necessarily doesn't even fall in the first three categories what i do is i just drag and drop them into archive for example at some point last year i was scripting for my youtube videos over here inside of obsidian so all the published videos that i have had over that specific period of time are actually kept inside of published video then i have a bunch of random files that i don't really use including the images video files you know a bunch of that kind of stuff that i'm not really using at the moment then once we have discussed all these four the inbox is basically the default files if i press ctrl n let's say on my computer i have the untitled one the file that is just made inside of inbox so kind of like the whole purpose of having the inbox is so when i create my new files they automatically just slide inside of inbox and i don't really have to spend a lot of time you know finding files otherwise what happens is that like i have this attachment and i can also have that for files so what really happens is that if i create a new file it's lying somewhere up in here and as you make newer and newer files this whole place gets really cluttered and that's not something that we really want then the next thing that i would like to talk to you guys about is let's say i've already like created a file untitled one let's say i created like you know a random note let's say and i press enter then i press ctrl t which is by the way the shortcut for creating templates i've already talked about this in my last video let's say this is a youtube video for example or let's say it's a podcast so if i type podcast and hit enter i will have all of these elements that are there for the podcast so there are two reasons primarily why i made this number one the obvious reason is that because i don't have to type this whole thing every time and it makes the whole process faster so primarily the second reason and even the more important reason why i have this specific template is so i can have the address of that file so you know as you go through this process of making notes inside of a second brain or a digital brain as people like to call it you will have so many files that at a certain point of time it will actually be impossible to find a certain file so what i like to do is i like to mention the genre and inside of genre i basically link it with a page of that specific type that is associated to let's say it's a podcast and you know maybe it's a youtube video as well then i type youtube video then i'll hit enter and in a similar fashion let's say if i open the notes of a podcast that i showed you in my last video yes this one so over here you guys can see that this has so many genres like podcast youtube video self-help investing so the whole purpose is for example if you know five years from now let's say i have so many notes and i'm unable to find this specific file i can somehow you know find it because it's linked with podcast youtube video self-help investing personal development all that kind of stuff so what we are basically doing over here is that we are making its searchability easier so in the internet side of things you have something that's known as seo that is search engine optimization what that basically is is i won't be getting into that by the way but what that basically is is like you want to make things easier for you to find on the internet so in a pretty similar way we are doing that inside of our note taking app as well so i have all of these genres and i can find a specific file based on the genre so then after that we have status and in the status we can see how far i have made progress with the specific file i have specifically three status one is to do then we have doing and the third one is done so let's say if it was in to do then i type to do and hit enter now i know that i have to do something with the specific file then i also have for doing and of course for done like i have over here then the tags are pretty interesting the tags that i like using quite a bit are life changing and evergreen so life changing is like something if that's life changing so the evergreen tag is basically like if something that i find that is like evergreen in a sense that if i read five years from now this specific note only it should again make sense but let's say if i'm learning a specific software so that's not an evergreen note because the whole software can change or even the software may not even exist in the future so it's not an evergreen note in that specific category then what you can have after that is you can click on these three dots and open up the local graph view so by looking at this you can see all the files that this specific you know note is linked with and this is extremely helpful in case you're working with you know a bunch of notes so you can see what all notes is it actually pointing to and that's pretty helpful in some categories and then of course you can have the whole graph this is a local graph you can also have the whole graph by pressing ctrl g and this actually opens up the whole graph view and sometimes you know what i do is for the searchability only let's say i want to see all the notes that are to do that i have something to do with then what i'll do is i'll go to this open graph settings and i'll actually type to do and i'll actually hit enter and then as you guys can see i have this to do node 
and this to do note actually shows me all the notes that are linked with it that i haven't really completed so you know this template and a bunch of that kind of stuff that is lying over here and then i can complete the ones that lie in the category of to do and the reason for mentioning tag is that i can also search things with tag if i press tag these are all the tags that i'm using you know it's time to mention the time frame in which these things were actually written then i also have life changing evergreen and i actually have a couple of them it's like time journal evergreen life changing people concept you can have the way you like this is the way i like using it so everything that i talked about in this video was pretty simple what you need to do is you need to have a comprehensive folder structuring this para method this is the way i like going if you find something better you can also go with that then what you need to do is you need to make the searchability of the notes easy and you can also have templates to make the process faster you can also have tags to make it really searchable but at last what i would like to tell you guys is i would like to tell you the fact that how you can actually revise the notes for example you would have probably met people over these years who remember the notes of a specific book and you would be like hey how does he or she remember the notes of a specific book you and me both of us are reading a specific book we read that book and after as you know the time passes on we actually forget what was really written in that book but let's say if you want to revise what were the notes inside of that specific book what we can do is i can install another plugin that is inside of core plugins and that goes by the name of the random note you can have this note as well or inside of the community plugins otherwise you have even a better version of random note i think it goes by the name of smart random note you can basically install it over here and it looks something like this and then once you install it all you need to do for installing is just click on it and it basically installs by itself then you can open random note by search for example let's say i only want to look at all the notes that belong in the category of philosophy so i have typed philosophy over here and if i click on open random note by search so it will open this philosophy note so in that specific category it has opened up something that belongs to philosophy and this is notes of a book of psychology my money and i have written a couple of notes over here and a bunch of that kind of stuff so let's say for example for a week you only want to learn everything that you wrote about programming so you can type programming over here and then you can just keep on searching random notes that belong to programming and in a certain way you can do that you can do it with as many notes as you want you're learning programming you're learning a specific software philosophy psychology anything that you're learning you can do it with this open random note by search and it is extremely helpful so i guess that is pretty much it from my side and you can do everything that i talked about in this video it's pretty easy as i said you know follow this structuring use the templates increase the searchability of your notes and that's it there's nothing to fancy about this spend some time writing the notes and you will have your note taking system as well so that's it from my side if you made it this far make sure you guys like the video because that is made you're full of energy and you're pumped so thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video.